it's no secret that we're coming out of a horrific recession. I'm not sure whether it was a recession or a depression. But the fact of the matter is, the work picture is improving in various markets across North America. The challenge that the IUPAT has and what we must be ready to face up to is to make sure that that nearly 25 to 30,000 members that we lost in the period between 2008 and 2013, that we would make some effort as the work picture improves to regain that membership. Not just say everybody is at work now. If we accept the status quo, we'll ride the economy up and we'll ride it back down. And each time we ride it up, it won't quite get to the previous high point. So if we want to grow this organization to be strong enough to remain relevant and be effective for our members in the future, then we have to seize that bold future. In the time between our last convention and today, there have been a lot of good things that happened. If we start with our organizing department, we did some very good things in reallocating resources and making sure that we provided the types of services and the type of leadership to help us be effective in organizing. Which of course, as you may know, organizing is how this organization will survive. Organizing is our top priority across North America. In the last 10 years, we've given back over $33 million to our affiliates uh, for organizing assistance through various ways, but it, it's been direct financial assistance. Recognizing that contractors aren't strictly local, we developed a database called Contract that is solely for organizers to track jobs, contractor information, and workers all on one platform and comprehensive training is increasingly available for our organizers. We have programs like our leadership series. We also have organizing boot camps. Uh, we train our organizers on how to run strategic campaigns. We train our organizers in things like top-down organizing. Programs like CORE, Community Organizing for Real Economics, are also helping us gain new members while growing our involvement with and support for our local communities. Pigeon to me and my family, my wife, we're both disabled and without it, we would be living a pretty rough life right now. But when you can just sit back, relax, not do anything, and every month you're getting a pigeon rolling in for life, that's enjoyment. Our members deserve to retire with dignity. Our pension fund team has worked hard to counter the recent weak economy. I'm very pleased to say that that restructuring is yielding benefits right now. There has not been a pensioner who has not received their check or their direct deposit. There has not been a plan participant who hasn't had any question unanswered. That is due to the restructuring and developing various departments within the fund to ensure that that service is delivered. Five years ago, the pension fund was in trouble. And we had to make some very difficult and unpopular decisions at the time to improve the fund. And all those decisions are coming to fruition now. And the fund is continually improving. I'm proud of our members rose to the occasion. And had allocated 35% additional contribution that accrues no benefit to pay the unfunded liability. We have our eyes not only on the results of the investments, but we also are looking at maintaining and improving market share to take ours up, and we're also looking at the importance of bringing in new talent, the younger talent, so that the viability of the pension fund will never change. The pension means a lot to me, especially now that I have a little baby girl on the way. When I do become retirement age, I do have a good pension, something that I can live on, you know, and it's something to look forward to as a means of support. Since 2009, 
The FTI has provided nearly $3 million in grants to local training programs for tools, materials, and equipment. The FTI can never rest on its laurels. Technology is constantly evolving, and the FTI must continue to strive uh, to be successful, be on the cutting edge of the training that's needed in all the industries we represent. A key achievement is developing a coating application specialist, CAS, third party certification. CAS is so important because it separates our workforce from the balance of the folks that are out there doing a similar type of work. Therefore, that separation provides opportunities for both the members and the contractors. Since our last convention, we've seen upgrades to our Hanover instructor training facilities, as well as at a great many locals. I see us becoming more technically savvy, the ability to handle things, the ability to make sure that as the industry changes, as equipment changes, as products and processes change, that we stay ahead of that curve. That's why I'm so proud and so pleased what our FTI has done. And that's try to set a direction. Over the past five years, the Labor Management Cooperation Initiative, LMCI, has made great strides in developing new markets and opportunities for employers and our members. When the LMCI trustees meet, they're not meeting to talk about the issues of today on both sides of the table. They're talking about how to utilize tools and the programs and to be able to use those tools and programs to benefit our members and to grow this organization and to be able to grow those industries. If, for example, labor and management aren't on the same page, we would not have committed to have a project management course to improve the ability of our signatory employers in managing the many complicated, tedious, and high dollar volume jobs that we all work on. The LMCI has also given a record $2 million in grants to local labor associations and district councils to improve local efforts to grow job opportunities. It's an opportunity to reach out to markets in a, in a way or a fashion that we've not done before. And creative programs like STAR, Safety Training Awards Recognition, provide job safety incentives, increase the community involvement of labor and management, and celebrate local teamwork and IUPAT families. All around the country, IUPAT Job Corps programs are changing lives and building futures. The IUPAT started with the Job Corps program in 1969, so for 45 years we've been providing quality pre-apprenticeship training in the flooring, painting, glazing, drywall, and sign display industries. The students that come through our programs sometimes come from challenging circumstances. And when you see them progress as I have, it's just a benefit and a belief that I have that the American dream is still alive and kicking. The painters support us in many ways, um, definitely providing the training for our students, but also for doing a lot of community service along with our students. Put it on the side. We get them early. We teach them to trade early. We teach them how to be safe early. And it's good for the neighborhood, the community, because it creates jobs. I feel like every time that I get a paintbrush in my hand, it's just like an energy surge. So I always feel motivated to do more things and just just to see my work get done in a timely manner. With Job Corps, I had much more experience than the other, the other apprentices I met on the field. You know, it gave me a great foundation and a great step forward, great leap. The government and Congress recognizes that this is a win-win, both for our trades and for the young people that we're serving to bring people out of poverty and into the middle class. The IUPAT is committed to active community involvement. Through the Painters and Allied Trades for Children's Hope Foundation, or PATCH program, over a million dollars has been donated since 2001 to youth organizations throughout the United States and Canada. I was contacted by the Painters Union and they asked the question of what could they do to help. I suggested book bags. They said not good enough. We want to do something even bigger. 
I said, what? He said, I want to give every student in your building a book bag, but I also want to throw in all the supplies they could possibly use during the school year. And so that's what we did. Okay, we're starting on first grade. We wanted to get in touch with the community organizations that we are allies with that really think and have the same mission statements that we have. And that connects us because when we begin to tell a community organization that we're working with, this really puts the rubber to the road, so to speak. It really shows them that we are committed. We feel that folks remember Patch and they will remember the painters and allied trades. When it comes a time in a person's life when they're looking for a career, looking to improve their lifestyle, looking for that goal of a middle-class, sustainable lifestyle, they'll think about the International Union of Painters and Allied Trades. That's our motive. That's our bet on the future. And we believe we're on the right path. Today, more than ever, the IUPAT is doing political action right. Across the U.S. and Canada, we are making sure our voices are heard. We know that a lot of things happen, a lot of gridlock occurs in Washington, D.C. and in Ottawa. We know that being engaged in that process is tedious as it may seem to the untrained eye, we still must be there. We can't operate in a vacuum. If we're not involved in the political game, and we've already seen it that in areas where we've not been involved, we're easily cut out of the picture. Let's put people back to work here, rebuilding our roads. Our Over the past six years with President Obama, we've seen some difficult times and a few solid successes. But we need to be sure the 2016 elections will move us forward. And in Canada, we must make every effort to assure the next election brings in leadership that recognizes the real value trade unionism brings to the middle class and to the country. Our U.S. and Canadian Building Trades legislative meetings and our annual lobby days, followed by comprehensive local engagement, are recognized as a political action model across the industry. I've always heard our union punches above their weight class, and I think there's uh, a reason for that. Um, we have uh, an amazing leadership at the, the international level, at the district council levels, throughout Canada and throughout the U.S. The real interesting thing about the civic engagement is not only getting out to vote, encouraging others to vote, but maybe having the energy and the skill and the ability to run for local office. That's resonated through our organization for several years now. IUPAT Bold Future. IUPAT Bold Future. IUPAT Bold Future. In today's economy in North America, on the best day we have going today, the organized workforce is 11% of the workforce. If you remove from that number government, municipal employees, teachers, nurses, police officers, firefighters, that number comes down to 6%. And when you, as a labor union and as the body of labor, are at 6% of the entire workforce, there's work to be done. Every delegate in this hall and every member of this union should be proud of the fact that we withstood everything, the economy, the political climate, and, and every other corporate force or any kind of force that was against us in the last five years. We've withstood it, we've emerged from it, still a strong union. Now we have to seize the bold future. We will be able to ensure that through our organizing efforts, through our efforts in politics, through our efforts in labor management relations, through our efforts in training, through our efforts in every program that we have, we will be able to move forward to a bold future, not only in words, but in actions. Oh, future! Oh, future!
Future. I, I create.